First of all, this video is a joke, it's purely for comedy and shouldn't be taken seriously. Yo, fuck it, if you can't see this video as a joke, you probably shouldn't even be watching it in the first place. Anyway, this video is the second part in the How many Spider-Man movies are there again? In a whatever the amount of Spider-Man movies there are part series where I criticize the F out of the Spider-Man movies for their BS and what they do wrong whilst also having a genuinely formed opinion because, you know, I'd like to keep a reputation at least. So if you haven't seen part one yet, I highly recommend you go check it out, and without further ado, let's do this. Saying what the Spider-Man 2 stands are too afraid to say. Let's talk. <laughs> Saying that hurt a little as a Spider-Man 2 stand. So, Spider-Man 2, where do we start? Oh yeah, the characters are still fucking stupid. In fact, I think they're worse than the last one. Come on, Spider-Man 2, you were meant to be the best Spider-Man movie and you're already a fucking letdown. Peter Parker is a lighthead throughout the entire thing. Literally, every single moment of this movie looks like he has no idea what he's doing. And this was the exact same from the last movie, except it looks worse here. Everything from the way he acts to his facial expressions, it's like, Jesus, man, you high? I mean, at least he ain't stalking anyone anymore. Okay, so that's Peter out the way with, but I mean, he's like the lower tier of problem when it comes to this movie. Let's talk about Harry for a second. Harry's actually really good at this movie. Once again, about the only character that reacts normally. I'm in charge here! It's my money! Okay. After the first movie, I had so much faith in you, Harry, and you just let me down. So yeah, this entire movie, Harry is just a whiny teenager. It's like he regressed from the first movie. It's like he goes backwards. In the first one, he was decently calm and collected. Here, James Franco is just throwing hissy fits every five seconds. It's like, chill the fuck out, bro. But he's not even the worst part. Oh, God. We're gonna talk about it. Mary Jane fucking Watson, and yes, fucking is her middle name, just so you know. This character, ugh, she's the definition of petty in this movie. In the first one, you can tell she likes Peter in the entire time, but then when Peter doesn't get with her, she then fucking finds Peter's boss, kidnaps his son, and marries his ass instead. First of all, movie, how fucking convenient that the guy she's now marrying is Peter Parker's boss's son. That's tongue twister, try saying that ten times fast. And second of all, when did this happen? Where the fuck did John Jensen even come from? I said John Jensen. John Jameson come from? Where was he the entire first movie and now he just appears for exposition for Peter and MJ's characters in their relationship? It's like Sam Raimi and the writers were in a pub and just started playing darts and whatever the dart landed on was another thing they were just gonna throw willy-nilly into this movie to make Peter Parker feel like dog shit. Speaking of fucking which, Peter feeling like shit. I'm sorry, but no one in life gets treated this badly. You know you're fucking up somewhere when someone on the street makes you drop all the books you're holding and then instead of walking around you, the following people decide to walk over you and then smack you in the face with their backs. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't. So let's move on to the villain. I had a few things to say about the Green Goblin in the last movie. I liked him, one of the best parts of that movie. Now let's talk about Dark Ock. This dude is a fucking idiot. I mean, it's not even surprising, and I'm not even mad at this point, because all this movie series is up to this point is just stupid people doing stupid things, but for a scientist, there's at least some expectation. This dude is a fucking nut job. Okay, so this guy is a scientist. It's his job to know the consequences of recreating the fucking sun in your fucking living room, you piece of shit. You could say, well, he didn't know what was gonna happen. You didn't know what was gonna go wrong. Bitch, he knew this thing attracts magnets. Surely if you're calculating the math and based off what material you're using for the experiment, surely you'd at least find out if it was magnetically attractive, right? Well, apparently not. Okay, okay, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's just say that he didn't think about that. Fair enough, it almost worked, right? But now you've learned, and Naughty Ark isn't gonna do it again. We can rebuild. What? You're going- you're going to do what? This guy. I can't. Doc Ock, more like Doc the fucking cock. Jesus, man. You almost blew up the entire city and you want to rebuild it? Yeah, well, he was controlled by the arm. Shh, that's not an excuse. Apart from all this, the rest of the movie consists of Peter losing his powers because he cried a little, Mary Jane is still a fucking with people's emotions, and Harry's regressing as a character. And Doc Ock is being a fucking idiot. Apart from that, the train fight is the best fight seen in the entire trilogy, so it's got something going for it. Speaking of fights, though, that final fight is so lackluster. Like, what's with this series and having shit final battles? The first one, I couldn't see shit, and here it's just like... Meh, especially coming off of the train fight. Anyway, I digress. This is the best film of all time, and I'll see you guys all in the next one when I cancel Peter Parker for being a fucking nonce. Peace.